Hey everyone, welcome back. Now, I'm going to be leaving town right away, so by the time this video comes out, I'll already have been gone and come back. But I just thought I'd give you guys an idea. Today's the day that I'm, as I mentioned, I'm leaving town tomorrow morning very, very early. So I've got to get a lot of things taken care of to make sure that all my animals have got everything they need in the event of me being away. So I've got to make sure I'm going to go and make sure I get food. So I stopped at my cricket guy and got my, the amount of crickets that I need to be able to go and feed everybody quick. I stopped at my bait store and I got some live worms. That's mainly for the fish. Maybe this is not really the fish channel, but I want to kind of give you guys a rundown of all the things that I've got to take care of, all the things I've got to look at and consider for while I'm away to make sure that all my critters are all taken care of. So let's take a peek. We gotta start looking at all our critters and our animals. So I gotta make certain that the water basins for the misting systems are already taken care of. I gotta make sure all my springtails and my isopods and all the different critters, you notice most of them are missing out of here. Uh, most of them have been moved. Uh, we're going to show you where everything is now because we're slowly getting ready to do that transition in here to bring all the fish tanks in and take all the critters out and set up a different critter room. I want to go in here and maybe clean the glass, but big boys sitting right here, right on the front of the, of the glass. Uh, you know, some of their waste products. I've got to clean their water dishes. So lots of little different things we've got to take care of. And we've got to make sure that we go and give everybody, any of the animals that need to be fed, these guys being uh, nocturnal, 100% nocturnal, he will be here by the, he'll still be here all day long, and so will she, until it gets dark. And then once the lights go out, that's when they go and hunt. And you see how they're downward facing? Uh, they're always downward facing because that's where the bulk of the insects will be. So we're going to go ahead and let's get some stuff taken care of. So for the millipedes, there's very, very little has to be done for the millipedes. I have to just make sure that the, the, the substrate is very, very moisture retentive. And that's got a fair count of moisture, but definitely not waterlogged. I basically, for the maintenance on this tank, it's literally about once every couple of months... I go and uh, remove some of the substrate and add a fair bit more of the white rot wood and the decomposing leaf litter and moss and so forth because that's basically the, the bulk of their diet. Otherwise, there's not much else to do with them. When it comes to some of the different tarantulas, like my big female Balfouri in here, I basically make sure that she's got clean, fresh water. There's no, uh, there's no boluses. There's no uh, dead crickets or anything like that, and I keep it nice and clean. And this is probably the most terrifying thing for me to see is this one here is I just came here, so I haven't even looked at this cage today until now. It doesn't look all that bad. I'm gonna clean the glass and so forth, but the absolute most terrifying thing is that. And that means that the cage wasn't locked. Now, I sure hope to hell my wife doesn't watch this video. <laughs> because <laughs> I could be in trouble. Uh, I'm going to go in here. We're going to feed them. We're going to make sure they got clean, fresh water. I water the plants, check on the moisture content of the substrate around the plants, make sure everything's good. And other than that, everything's good. So for now, we're just going to close them up. There's some stuff. Don't look at that. You don't know anything about that. Jedi mind trick, Jedi mind trick. It's May the 4th today, so it's uh, May the 4th be with you. So you guys just Jedi mind trick that completely out of there. But uh, we're going to go and clean the snake cage. You see his shed. And we got to get clean his cage, make sure he's got fresh water. Maybe we we'll give him a feed before we go. Obviously, we got to clean the cage of the the Salmopuyas polker. Look at how dirty he is. He always uses his front, or she always uses the front glass. She's right there. Use the front glass as her toilet. But you see, most of the spiders and stuff, I've been bringing stuff out here uh, because we're slowly starting to get ready. But other for most of these cages, the tropical ones that come from wet areas, we got to make sure they're water dishes, and then we mist down the enclosures really, really well before going away. See, I see needs water, needs water, needs water. This one here, the water's at the back, can't really see, but the, the moss looks dry. Uh, this is a desert type species. This is my uh, cyano, uh, chromatopelma cyanopubescence, which is my uh, green bottle of blue. You need to have the water dish cleaned up. And other than that, these are pretty, pretty straightforward. So in part of the daily maintenance or the weekly maintenance, the monthly maintenance, depending on the animals and stuff in your care, but also more importantly, just before you're going to go away, be it on a holiday, even for just a few days, is make sure you go and check absolutely everything. Make sure your lights are working good. Make sure your timers are working good. Make sure that all the environmental controls are working properly so that they're good for the animals. Now, this is my Toke Gecko tank. So the thing I'm going to do is the first thing I do is I'm just going to clean the glass Nothing exciting. Nobody really wants to see how to clean glass. I'm sure everybody can handle those sort of type of things on their own. It's not a matter of me being it spotless, but I like to maintain the cleaner the habitats, 
And if you're removing the waste products, it's healthier environment for the animals. Correct. So come on, make sure we're always providing the best that we can for our animals because that is our role. Now, the other things I want to do is I've gone and made sure that I've changed the water, given them some fresh water. I always take some sort of a stick or something like that. I always place it in my water dish before I leave that way because I'm going to be feeding a lot of crickets. These are kind of opportunistic hunters. They will come out every night and they will hunt. But because I'm going to be away, I'm going to be leaving tomorrow. So it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday I'm getting back that I won't be offering any food. I usually do it kind of twice a week and I give them kind of a large quantity. So we're going to be feeding them crickets primarily today. I can, in the event that I'm home, is what I'll often do is I will often go and either attach the cup somewhere within here. Sometimes I've had cages where I've made two of these type of holders to hold like the water and then the food source. And we've done that before. But for now, we're just going to go and dump the crickets in. But before we go and dump the crickets in, I always got to make sure that I'm giving them a good quality calcium supplement along with the crickets. So I'm going to be dusting the crickets in here and then dumping them in here. The other things that we're going to want to do is uh, I noticed I'm getting some new leaf growth here, but the leaf growth is crinkled. So that often shows that the humidity within the cage is not high enough. Now, when this cage eventually goes online with all the other cages in the other room, in the critter room, we will go and install the misting system in here. For now, several of the, the screen vents are covered with acrylic, uh, and then the vents draw at the back and the vents pull for the floor. So I've got my cross floor ventilation. But to maintain the humidity a little bit higher is I will go and mist the cage occasionally. And by misting the cage occasionally, it keeps the, the water, the moisture level within the substrate a little bit higher. I even, I even go in and go directly inside their hide. Toke geckos are probably one of the most extremely adaptable of all the gecko species. They, uh, I often see them in zoo exhibits where they are now uh, almost completely urbanized. And the zoo exhibits are not intended to make them look naturalized anymore. They all actually set them up with uh, all sorts of household things to make it uh, look naturalized for the cage because these animals can be found in people's homes all throughout Indonesia and so forth. But that's good for bringing up the humidity. If I haven't watered the plants, but I'd already watered the plants this week, so they're, they're good. The substrate's still moisture retentative, so I'm not gonna go and add any more water for the plants. Then it's just left to feeding them. So cleaning the glass, checking the health of the environments, removing any dead growth, dead leaves and so forth. You know, just generally giving an overall look at the whole environment, making sure everything's good. Now, the crickets tend to go right down into the substrate with all this leaf litter, so I'm not going to disturb that while the doors are open because they'll just throw, it'll be like popcorn happening all of a sudden. Uh, but I can still see some crickets in there. The plants are doing well. But now is also the time where I've got to make sure I change their water. You know, they change the water daily, especially before I'm going to go away. And it's also a good chance to give a good health check. Now, the nice thing with geckos is a lot of them will often present themselves directly on the glass. So you can see everything on the underside. But uh, if we get them to move, there he goes. They're very active, but there's like, it's almost like owning gigantic frogs. All right, so we've gone and done water changes in all the fish tanks. I know this isn't the fish channel, but we've gone and done water changes with them. And then all the water we used from that we went and watered all the tropical plants. Everything's all watered. Everything's good to go. We checked in all the ones in containers. And then there's even the little greenhouse that's in behind there. And we checked that. We watered everybody in good. We took care of that enclosure that you guys saw. We gave them all fresh water. We cleaned the glass and stuff. We removed all the boluses and stuff from the different animals. Uh, the waste products and stuff. We kind of stirred up the substrate a little bit. We re-inoculated some more springtails and so forth. You notice I got my little stick in there. Everything's good. That enclosure looks awesome. We've gone and refilled the water thing, so the misting system worked flawlessly, and we checked our heaters and our lights. Fed, my daughter does come and check the fish and stuff, but my daughter wants nothing to do with this sort of stuff. But every single one of these enclosures, the water's been checked, cleaned, refreshed, and then every single one of the enclosures that needed to be misted down, like the tropical ones, like the sazamai or the cobalt blue, those ones got a nice misting down. The more arid species, they just they were left. But otherwise, everybody's been fed, clean, and dried. Now, everybody here, all the slings and everybody, the smaller stuff, was all just fed this week. So I didn't have to even look at those because I know they were all done. When you have a collection of this sort of size, and this isn't all of it, uh, you kind of got to break it up a little bit. But we've cleaned up the glass on, uh, on the enclosure for the Salma Puyas Polker. There she is right up there. And we cleaned the glass on the snake. Everybody's good to go. And then the tokes and the isopods, we went and watered and checked all the isopod enclosures just this week as well. So that made today's job a little bit easier because there's lots of them. So there you have it. It's kind of a whirlwind tour. It's all over the place. But honestly, that's what it's like in my day to day. 
taking care of all the different types of fish, all the different types of invertebrates, the reptiles, it doesn't matter. Even the food sources for those animals, we gotta make sure that they are cared for the best. So things like the cockroaches had to be maintained, make sure that they're clean, they're, they're fed and watered and ready to go for the whole time that I'm gonna be away. Now granted, I'm gonna be only away for a couple of days, so it's not all really that big of an issue. But if you were to say go away for a week, or even two weeks for a vacation, there's certain things that you're gonna to wanna to check on and make sure that are gonna be working for you, like all those health systems that we talked about in the video. But more importantly is it allow you the chance to kinda of relax. The whole purpose of going away for a vacation is so you can relax and enjoy yourself. And if you're worried about whether or not you did this or that, maybe you should make a checklist and go over all those little things that we talked about and make a little checklist and check them off one by one as you go through them and it'll make your vacation go a lot smoother. So hopefully you guys gained something out of that. I had fun, it's something I do every single week. But uh, until next time, my friends, take care.